Welcome to the Boiling Point. Today we've got Gerald Blaine with us, and anytime Gerald's with us, we're probably going to be talking about combustion or savings of some type. Now, Gerald, I thought we talked today. People like to actually put a retrofit burner on boilers, or when they're first starting the uh, their project out, they're trying to get efficiency. One of the things that we know is that on the back end, after everything's in, you can't get as efficient as if you actually do things on the front end. This is true. This is true. So maybe just go through maybe some of the, the, the we'll go through the configurator a little bit, talk a little bit about uh, information that you need to be able to uh, get a more efficient burner, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. Yeah, it's often misunderstood that you can do all these back-end things and ignore the front-end opportunity, mm -hmm. and that's just not the case. Uh, when you have a boiler, which is a heat exchanger, an economizer, or whatever else you're doing downstream, none of those things will actually uh, get you what you missed out on the front end. Mm -hmm. And the reason that is, is the heat exchangers are designed around uh, one major parameter, and that's the available heat. Mm. So we tend to, as a best practice, try to get the front end right so that the heat exchangers and the other heat transfer or heat recovery systems that you're dealing with can do the job they were intended to do. Mm. And there's a variety of things uh, in that process that can have an impact on all of those other tools. Uh, it could be increased velocity of your combustion system. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, high excess air, which is causing flame quenching, causing the furnace to cool. Mm -hmm. And those things are anti-heat exchanger. So by getting those things corrected, uh, it could be just bad combustion in producing CO and just wasting the fuel. Right. So by us putting the front end in the right position to do the job, we improve the process. We allow all of those back end tools to do the job the way they were designed. Mm -hmm. Now when you're doing a retrofit though, you still can get some savings, I'm assuming, when you're doing a retrofit on an older system. Yeah, that, that's the whole point of that, because we're now we're kind of doing it backwards. When we design a new system, we make sure we do that front end stuff correctly. Right. But in an older system, uh, it's never too late to go back, do a retrofit, get the front end information correct. Mm -hmm. And so what we're able to do, we have some tools. Uh, we have what we call an emissions calculator, okay. and we take a look at what the current system is doing compare it to what we know we can do, mm -hmm. uh, because we offer on our retrofits guaranteed performances. So when we make that comparison, this system will spit out the information, we'll get uh, emissions changes that we would have, mm -hmm. what the savings would look like as compared to the existing system. Okay. And then all the heat exchangers then can do all the things they were designed to do in the first place. Okay. Well, maybe go through some of the, the information that uh, uh, a plant would actually need to give you. Well, the process can start out real simple. We don't like to make our customers do a whole bunch of work, but some of the basics is, you know, what size boilers do you have? Uh, how often are they in operation? If you have the gas bills, we can make some, some comparisons. We usually can do some front end guesstimates of what we think the utilization of the equipment is, mm -hmm. and then we can compare it later to what your gas bills actually are. Mm -hmm. So just knowing the size of the equipment and how they're used in terms of, are they, are they used 24 seven, are they used two shifts a day for five days? Mm -hmm. Those kind of things help us get started on the input. Mm -hmm. uh, more uh, detailed information later to make sure everything's matching up is if we could get analyzer readings, see the exact combustion performance at different levels, mm -hmm. uh, what the fuel cost star that you're using we usually can make some guesstimates by going to the internet and looking at what fuel prices are mm -hmm. uh, and knowing how often you're operating and getting your gas bill to make the comparisons right and the actual maybe actual load as well I mean you got your boiler sizes but what about how that thing is running through the day is it what type of turn down yeah when if you have that kind of information that's great usually our comparison with analyzer readings and your fuel bill, mm -hmm. we can kind of get a general profile, mm -hmm. plus having a conversation with the guys that are involved uh, with the equipment. They kind of know what kind of loads happen during different parts of the day. So getting that communication. But it usually starts with the basics of give us the size of the boilers and how often you operate. Mm -hmm. We'll run a preliminary estimate, and then we'll work our way down to the final numbers. Okay. Well, Gerald, with some of the retrofits or even the systems, what are what are some of the savings that uh, I guess that, that customers are actually getting with the, what you're doing? 
Well, our experience, depending on the level of retrofit, sometimes it's just the controls, mm -hmm. and controls can have a great impact on the system. They might be anywhere from a potential savings of seven to 12%. Mm -hmm. um, the limiters become what we're putting those controls on. Mm -hmm. uh, if we upgrade the combustion systems itself and have the controls package, and we know the performance that the burner can actually do, mm -hmm. those savings can be 10 to 14. We've seen them even higher. Mm -hmm. Usually don't try to get people too excited about that. We try to be conservative. Right. But no question, we've, we've done case studies, seen numbers in those ranges, and we've got hundreds of them in the field. So. And we know that linkage to linkage lists, we get savings. Mm -hmm. What about other linkage list burners mm -hmm. and you're replacing it with another linkage list burner? Can you get savings there? Yeah, we usually can get anywhere from another uh, six to eight percent okay. uh, because we know the performance criteria of our burner and mm -hmm. when we compare and see what's actually happening with their burner in the field mm -hmm. we can make that comparison with our tools and know that we can provide that additional savings. Right, right. Now um, maybe some information that uh, we can give to the folks. Um, I think you're going to be working on something that uh, yeah, would be we're pretty gonna, cool. Yeah, we're going to come up with an online form where you can go to our website and plug in this information if you have it, and it'll come straight to us. We'll do an evaluation, send you a report. You can look at it, see if it makes sense to discuss any further, and then we can put together an ROI for you on uh, what kind of equipment it would take to get these kind of performances. Until then, you can actually just use the old telephone and give him a call and actually ask those questions. Correct. And he's got his 50th birthday coming up really soon, so <laughs> you can wish him a happy 50 coming up March 13th. So uh, well, we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, welcome to COVID Camping 2020. Finally able to get out in the woods and enjoy a little bit of the outdoors after being cooped up for a bit. Always great to get out and enjoy with family. Appreciate Gerald hanging out with us, talking about the auto flame, a little bit about combustion, lots of knowledge there, and certainly appreciate him taking the time to do that. Now, speaking of auto flame, if you go to our website and go to combustion and then scroll down and you will find uh, auto flame, click on it and you will be able to see all of the new webinars that auto flame is doing for free. If you'd like to check them out, there's a full list out there that you can sign up for. Well, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And as always, share those videos. You see Bigfoot? We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.